Alright guys, welcome back. So in this part we're going to be taking a look at making a proper game over screen for our Asteroids game. Um, at the moment what happens if you fly into another asteroid, um, the game just instantly restarts, yeah? So um, that's not really optimal. It works, it's functional for what we had, but uh, I think it's time to make things look a little bit nicer while our game is in a reasonably kind of, you know, functional good state. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating a cool little fancy death animation when um, you run into another asteroid and then presenting this game over text that you can see on the screen here. So I'm going to show you what the finished effect will look like. It'll look like, well, if I can even kill myself in my own game. There we go. It'll look something like that. So you run into the thing, little explosion sound happens, um, bits of your ship go off flying and you get presented with this game over screen. Um, there's quite a little bit of stuff to do um, with getting this to work, so I'm going to actually split this into two parts. Uh, first part, which is what we're going to be looking at today, is going to be looking at creating that cool little death animation for the car, for the spaceship, and then in the next part we'll look at doing this game over text and the press R to restart, which as you can see works. Okay, so at the moment all we really have is this, right? So you fly into a thing and the game just instantly restarts and it's not particularly exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to create three... Well, we're going to create a new object type that's going to be just a little white line that kind of looks like the, the edges of our spaceship. And we're just going to create three of them when the player collides with an asteroid and have them like fly off in random directions. Uh, or a semi-random direction and also just play the explode sound effect and get rid of the player so it looks like a little pfft and it looks like it kind of exploded. You might want to use a different sprite type or whatever is the thing I'm going to make or it might not particularly work if you've got a very very different like type of player sprite but hopefully this should give you some sort of inspiration on what could be done and hopefully just makes your player death look a little more interesting than just the game restarting, right? Okay, so the first thing I want to do is actually create a new sprite for this thing, okay? So I'm going to go into sprites, right click and insert sprite, and uh, I'm going to call this spr underscore dead player. I mean, I guess I could call it dead player part or whatever, but I don't know, dead player will do for me for now. So I'm going to go to edit sprite, create a new sprite, and I'm going to make it 1 pixel wide and 32 tall. It's just going to be a straight vertical white line. I'm just going to fill it with white like that, okay? Just just a white line. Tick, and hit center. Obviously you might want to draw like a little piece of debris or something like that if your spaceship is a little bit more fancy than just a little white triangle I've made, but I'm just sort of trying to emulate the style of the original asteroids, just because that's fun. So I'll click OK with that. We've got that sprite now and I'm going to make the new object. So go to insert object and I'm going to call this obj underscore dead player. This is the same as the sprite, just so it makes it easy for us to remember what it's linked to. And sprite, I'm just going to click this and link it to SBR underscore dead player. Now there's not really a whole lot I'm going to want this object to actually do by itself, other than kind of rotate as it moves through space. We're going to control its movement and everything else from uh, the collision event with the asteroid. So in here I'm going to add just the step event, drag in an execute code action, and I'm just going to write image underscore angle plus equal one. So the image angle is going to increase by one every single frame, meaning it's just going to rotate around in a circle, okay? So click, tick, and close that. The next step comes with us changing up what happens when the player actually collides with an asteroid. At the moment this is controlled inside of obj underscore asteroid under the event collide with obj underscore player. And uh, we have at the moment all we do is execute a piece of code that says game underscore restart and we're going to get rid of that now. Now I've already done this because I was setting this up earlier but go ahead and click in here where it says applies to make sure you tick other okay because this is a collision event um, with a particular object other represents the object that you are colliding with so it's going to apply this code to obj underscore player and not obj underscore asteroid because we have other ticked okay that's entirely how that works. So in here, the first thing I'm going to do is actually set up a couple of temporary variables. The way you do that is to use the function var. You see that turns yellow because it knows it's a thing. And uh, var just establishes a variable, but it like throws that variable away again at the end of the um, at the end of the script. Okay, so it's a good way to create like variables that you're not going to need for very long or to just store things very quickly. First one I'm going to create is going to be random angle. Okay, it shouldn't turn yellow or anything like that, or it does when you write the word random because that's a command, but then it'll go gray again when you write angle. I'm going to set it to equal random, uh, open bracket, 360. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to create just um, a random angle that I'm going to kind of use to sort of randomize how these things like break off so they don't always break off in the same way. Uh, right, var o and just end it end that line with a semicolon. O is just going to be a variable which we use to store the instance ID of each one of these um, dead player objects that we create. Okay, each one of these little lines. We're going to make three of them, and we're going to give each one of them like an angle so that they just kind of fly off. Okay, as we saw at the beginning of the video. So, the first thing I'm going to do is set O to equal instance underscore create. And that will turn yellow. X, Y, OBJ underscore dead player. Close bracket, semicolon. And then I'm going to type O dot angle to equal zero plus random angle semicolon. So it's going to basically I'm creating a new variable inside of the object that we've just created and I can refer to um, refer to variables and change variables in another object if I know its ID just by typing its ID and then putting in a dot. Okay? So that means it allows me to create that angle inside of the object that we just created. Make sense? And then we're going to do that same thing again basically two more times. I'm going to say O equals instance underscore create x comma y comma obj underscore dead player semicolon then I'm gonna write o dot angle equals 120 plus random angle because we're gonna do this at like the three thirds of like a circle and it's like plus the randomizer so that they like random you get the idea okay so then o equals instance underscore create x y obj underscore dead player again so again we're just changing o to be the new id of the new thing we've just made and then o dot angle is going to equal 240 plus random angle so you can't okay the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of those um uh, obj underscore dead players that we've made now and just set them up to move based on all of the stuff we've done. We can't really go into the create event of um, obj underscore dead player and say tell it to do stuff based on this angle because that create event will occur before this happens because the moment we do instance create is going to create that object and run its create event so if it needs to look for um, another variable that we set on the line after it's not going to know what that is yet because we haven't got to that part in the code yet okay but what we can do is create them all like that, they've all run their create event and now just do something to them all in this particular script and we can do that by using the with command, okay? So type with and it'll turn yellow like that and open the bracket type in obj underscore dead player and open a set of braces. Now anything that we put in these braces will occur to every single one of obj underscore dead player that's on the screen at the moment. So what we're going to do now, because we know they all have this uh, variable at this point, this angle variable, is I'm going to set their direction to equal that angle, that image angle to start at that angle, because we know it rotates in the step event as well. And then I'm just going to set the speed to equal 3. Okay, So it'll create three of these things and they'll, they'll fly out of the player and they should like rotate as they're moving because that's what they're set up to do in their step event. Then the other only other thing we need to do is say audio underscore play underscore sound. Uh, SMD explode, we'll use that same sound again. Uh, we'll set the priority to be like higher than the other uh, sounds, so I'll set that to 10, just so you get the idea of what it does. Uh, and that means if there's loads of sounds playing at once, for example, like more than the upper limit what we might have set for our game, then it will prioritize this sound over others and it will stop other sounds in favor of this sound and the player dying is kind of a specific special moment so it's like it's kind of important that we hear this sound um, rather than hearing just say gunshots and things like that okay so we'll set the priority to be a bit higher uh, we don't want it to loop so end with a zero on there. Um, and then the last thing is just we're going to kill off the uh, the player object and we know all this code is running inside the player object because that's why we take the other up there. So I'm going to type instance underscore destroy. Open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Okay. Tick there, run that, and we should see when we fly into an asteroid now, we get a little bit of a cooler effect. So I'm going to fly into this. Kaboom. 
just like that, simple. Now the game doesn't end or restart anymore at this point, so obviously that's what we're going to be covering in the next part when we look at how we do the game over text and please re like press R to restart type thing. But if you want a really quick fix now, well, say I haven't uploaded that video yet, go ahead and open up uh, an object that's always present. So like I'm going to open up obj underscore score for example. I'm going to add event, very quickly just add in the key press letters R for example and go into main two over here and just drag in restart game or you can use game underscore restart if you really want to this will do the exact same thing and then if you run that every time you press R the game will like restart just like that very very convenient like kind of debug thing to have in general obviously we'll have something that specifically works on the game over screen when we come around to doing it but for now just having that available to us is pretty useful Okay, so that's a very quick way of doing that. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. The next part will be up pretty soon, I hope. And uh, yeah, any comments, suggestions, or whatever, leave them in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you guys.